Hi there. Welcome to 2023, January 2nd. Uh, I am out here today and it's a little bit foggy. It's kind of like eerie and mysterious. I, I kind of actually love it. Um, but I thought it's really nice, decent temperature. It's, it's still pretty chilly, uh, but once I get going, I think it'll, it'll be a nice working environment, if you know what I mean. Um, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get out here and pull some of like the dead hassa leaves back that I uh, just didn't get to this fall. So clean those up, maybe do a little bit of weeding down in the gully garden. Um, clean up any like annual leftovers that I didn't get to this fall. Uh, I've got some like big begonias everywhere that I didn't pull out. Uh, some uh, euphorbia, like I said, some hasta uh, remnants and just some weeds. Uh, I, I think that's pretty much it, but it's pretty much it, but it's still a lot. <laughs> So I thought I would come out here and it's 8 a.m. and I'm just really excited to be out here. The air is like super fresh and crisp, even though it's foggy. And I don't know if you can even tell, the squirrels are out running around. So maybe we'll get a chipmunk that will come visit us today. I don't know, I haven't seen many chipmunks lately because of the snow. I think they're all hibernating with all their they're nuts that they've been gathering over the fall. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna grab my garden bag and I already have my gloves from the other day. I came out here to do a little uh, garden tour. There goes my scrunchie. <clears throat> um, I came out here the other day to do a tour of the garden after our big couple winter storms and blizzards that we had. And I had great intentions of uh, cleaning and weeding in that movie as well, but a lot of times I've got all these grand ideas and not enough time to actually finish them all. <laughs> so a second movie it is and we'll make it its own. But let me grab my things and we'll get started. The other day I came out here and noticed that my potting bench was gone. Uh, usually it was sitting right there. It's like this nice big rectangular square shape type bench and it's completely gone. <laughs> well, with a giant windstorm that came through, that is what happened and I'm really bummed out because look at all those gorgeous terracotta pots. I don't think all of them are broken but some of them obviously are and uh, the back of my potting bench fell off. My brother painted that for my sister-in-law and uh, they had it in their old house and he gave it to me but anyway um, it's not going to be a huge project to clean up but I'm kind of bummed about the pots somebody told me I could use those to cover up my plants that I don't want the deer and rabbit getting into and that is a great idea so I will definitely be doing that if I could get my husband to come out here and help me clean it up because I'm afraid there may be mice in there I don't know we'll, we'll see all right we will get oh, sorry I'm getting sidetracked but I want to clean all this out gonna be so fun and there's a really pretty maple tree back there I want to do secret garden all the fun possibilities let's uh stick to the plan here get my bag there and I gotta put my gloves on first because uh just in case there's all oh, these gloves are kind of crunchy they went through the wash machine maybe one too many times um, but yeah, I don't want to touch this bag because it could have poison ivy oils on it, unfortunately. Gotta be real careful of that because I have really bad reaction to poison ivy. So, alright, let's go. So I thought we'd start at the start, <laughs> at the front. Um, I have a bunch of big begonias in here, red, red big begonias that, well, they're not red anymore, they're dead. <laughs> they went from red to dead. Um, but anyway, got some begonias I'm going to just pull out and then some euphorbia and then I'm going to make my way over here and clean out the hosta. And that will be it for, for this and section. These form some pretty nice sized roots. Uh, so I kind of just gently pull, uh, gently pull to get all of the root ball out without losing it in there. 
and then just kind of shake <clears throat> the leftover soil and throw it in a bag. Just gently pull, give it a shake, toss. And as I go, like here, I've got some grass growing in here. I'll just pull those as I, since I'm down here and here, I might as well pull it. And then I'm just gonna cover that hole back up with the mulch. And we will continue on. We'll gently pull, shake, toss. Gently pull, shake, yesterday and we kind of walked up to your landscape because our daughter's building a new home and she said oh mom what kind of plant is that what kind of plant yeah is that? oh yeah you're welcome to come look anytime when they yeah, all pop I love up the coral bells because they add so much color you know yeah, yeah we got it's like semi evergreen they just bloom in the yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah so we just happened to walk up here yesterday because i'm just in for the weekend we go home yeah. today uh, and we saw the house it's just so cute it looks yeah, so nice thank you well, if you come back in the summer, spring, you can come look at my, I got gardens all down in there. Oh, so. yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. Yeah, you can take a walk. Awesome. <laughs> well, have a happy new year. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Bye. So as I'm going along here, I'm finding just little clumps of grass that have crept their way into my uh, garden bed here. So since I'm down here, I'm pulling those out. Um, I'm so excited because I just met some new neighbors. They took a walk by and they're like, oh, your, your plants look so good. And they commented on uh, the coral bells, the heucara. And they're like, I just love your, your huger, or your, they said coral balls, but they're like, I love your coral balls so much. It's just so much color in the middle of winter. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. That's awesome. That's exactly why, why I love them so much. So that was really neat uh, that I got to meet them. It was a gal that lives in like the development across the street. And she walks in through here and her mom's in town for the holidays. Um, from Indiana so they were taking a walk down the street and they walked by here yesterday and noticed the garden and it we're in the middle of winter right now and it's not the best looking but they did notice the coral bells so that was like I don't know that was a little nice little god moment right there because um I've been talking so much about the, the heucara and how amazing it is <laughs> sometimes I'm like Am I going too crazy about this plant? Like sometimes I'm a little nuts, but here's a little piece of grass here. We'll just pick that. It's a lot easier to pick this while I'm down here right now, as opposed to when you see it in the uh, summertime, because man, it, it gets super dry out here and it's really hard to get the entire root ball, but it's so wet from all the snow, so much moisture that it comes right up. So I always try to grab it while I'm here. I've only made it so far, but this bag is getting pretty heavy. Uh, so I'm gonna go dump it real quick and keep going. I'm also taking a second to clean up the uh, blooms, the dead blooms off of all these heucara. This is like a spider heaven in here. 
and I, let's be honest, I am not very fond of spiders. So during the season, I kind of just let these things uh, do what they do. Um, I don't, I don't even bother with trying to clean up the blooms off of these because I don't want to get in here with the spiders. And they are some big spiders. Uh, well, big for me here in Michigan. <laughs> I'm sure some of you deal with like giant, giant spiders. I actually lived in Australia. I, I lived in Australia for um, about a year or for a little over a year. And they had some giant spiders there uh, called Huntsman, Huntsman spiders. And one of my friends that I stayed with, they actually had like, it wasn't a pet, but it was just a spider, a huntsman spider that found its way in their house. And it like sat on the wall up above their dad's chair. And I was like, aren't you going to get rid of that spider? And they're like, oh no, he's fine. He's harmless. I'm like, but he's a giant spider. Anyway, uh, so I realized probably the spiders we have in Michigan are not nearly as scary as other ones. But this is my time to kind of clean these up a little bit before the spiders come make their webs in it for this for the year Just clean that up it is looking a lot better so much color in the winter so much color even just the uh grass there it kind of provides like a goldeny a light golden color and then it kind of wraps your eye into that darker golden color I don't know. I just love, <laughs> I love all the heuchera and boxwoods and grass. All right, let's clean this up. And I think I'm just going to leave the estobe, but I am going to clean the, uh, the hosta remnants there. We got married in a fever. Hotter than a pepper sprout We've been talking about Jackson Ever since the fire went out I'm gonna Jackson I'm gonna mess around Yeah, I'm gonna Jackson. This is where I had some impatience That was a hot star Clean that a little bit this is a Stokesia. This is a semi-evergreen. It gets really pretty uh, purple flowers on it. And uh, they're really good for drying. It almost reminds me of a straw flower type of a flower. Um, and in here, you can see this uh, hydrangea here is throwing out runners and shoots. And I'm gonna come in here in the spring and dig these out and uh, continue like a hydrangea hedge along my gully garden. So I'm excited about that. The grass. So I did come in here in the fall and I cleaned up all the hosta in that area and I made it kind of down to here. This is where I really wanted to clean up is that some in substance there and then around that little bird bath. You big talking man. I'm gonna leave some of the things in here. I got all like the mushy, gushy hosta leaves out, but I left a lot of the leaves from the, all the trees here. Uh, usually in the fall, when I rake up all the leaves in my yard or blow them, we blow them just into my garden bed and I use it as kind of like a protective mulch over the winter. So I am leaving all of that. I just came in and got all the mushy hosta leaves out. So it does look still kind of messy and dirty, but at least those hosta leaves won't be a nice place for 
slugs and mold and gross things to to grow over the winter uh, like that <laughs> so that's what I'm taking out so I'm gonna jump this and then we're gonna go over to the other side of my house and tackle all of the mushy hasta leaves over there so this bed is full of hasta galore and some heuchera I think there's like there's a stobie on that side I feel like I might be better off getting a rake <laughs> uh, but we'll just get my hands in there and see what we can do with just my hands but you can see this uh, Japanese maple tree here has dropped a bunch of leaves that might be easier to get up with a rake we will see what happens once we get in here i actually love uh cleaning hasta this time of year because you literally just take your hands and go like that and the whole thing comes up. It's super satisfying. Uh, but yeah, you just, if I can get under, here I'll show ya. You just kinda take your hands, grab it, go all the way around, and that's it. Snap off the leftover stalks, loom stalks, and you're good to go. It's a little bit easier to do the stalks first when they're this big. So I kind of just collect them in my hand like that. And then in order to get them in my bag, uh, really nice, I kind of just fold them over, set them aside, and grab the half the leaf like this. There's my Asta. dump this before we keep going. Well, that looks a lot better. At least I have the hasta squishy leaves picked up and then also some of the leftover stoby blooms are gone and it's looking pretty good you can see my drip tubing in here this irrigation we got that for free i would have never paid to put that in because i'm super cheap but when the guys came to do our underground sprinkling in our grass area they didn't come when they were scheduled to come and we didn't mind we were just patiently waiting but they said they felt really bad about it because it took, it took maybe like I don't know a couple weeks after they said they were going to come and they're like we feel really bad we usually are on time with everything on schedule we don't usually do stuff like this can we do something uh, for you can we upgrade your sprinkling system in your grass and can we also put uh, drip tubing in your flower beds and I was like sure <laughs> that'd be awesome uh so yeah we only have it around our house because that was where i had started putting my beds in and uh the rest just gets natural rainwater and supplemental water if i remember to water <laughs> not the greatest at watering but all right so that looks pretty good i'm liking it and then i have a couple pots here that I'm going to plant this spring. I don't know where I'm going to put them. One is a butterfly bush and then one is a rose that I got for like $12 at the Meyer store. And that wasn't even on clearance. That was the regular, uh, regular price. I couldn't believe it. And it's a David Austin rose. So I scooped that up, but I didn't have anywhere to put it at the end of the season. So 
Anyway, I'm gonna dump, I'm gonna dump this basket of trash and we'll see what else we can do. Well, honestly, I'm looking around and there's quite a bit of weeds. I wanted to do weed and clean all in one movie, but it's gonna take a while and my battery is going dead. <laughs> so, man, we could just do a whole movie on winter weeding. So let's save that for another time and uh, we'll just take a little gander back and look what we accomplished today been so nice to be out here and yeah it looks a lot better than what it did when we came out here and it will get me ready to kind of dig up all these hosta in here and split them come springtime the problem is so I might have to throw the splits in one of my dump holding beds until I find an actual spot for them which will be when I clean out more of the woods line and then I'll have spots to put them but all right, let's take a look at what we did over here. It doesn't look like much, but every little bit helps. <laughs> so over here, it is in fact looking a lot better than it did. I had tons of mushy hasta leaf around that little bird bath. And then I had a summon substance right there, there that needed cleaned up. I do want to come out here and clean up around this tree where I have the hellebore because they are starting to bud up. You can see right in here, these cute little buds are starting to pop. So I thought, I don't really want to clean up too much around it because I love the protection that the leaves provide for them. Uh, so, I don't know, we'll see. But every single one of these around here are starting to throw on buds and it's really exciting. This is such a fun plant to have in your garden. And honestly, I think it looks good all year round. I leave all of this foliage all year round and it is beautiful. I don't cut it off. Once um, the new growth starts to pop through, I will come in and clean off like the ugly looking ones. But this, this is last year's growth. This is last year's leaves and it still looks really pretty. So I just leave it and it does really well for me. But. Yeah, look at that, isn't that so cute? Love it. All right, well, let's see here. What else did we do? Oh yes, we cleaned up over here around this little area. There's just a few hosta that needed to clean up. That Francis William hosta was a major eyesore. We got it cleaned up. And then coming up here, we cleaned up a hosta. We cleaned up in my little retaining wall area, the heuchera we did, cleaned all the dead blooms. We got those halcyon hosta that were left over from the fall. I didn't get to and it is looking a lot better. Then we came around here and cleaned out the leftover annuals that I had up here, which will be nice because I have some daffodil bulbs planted in here and those pop up usually every year. so. That would be nice. Actually, I think I have daffodils all along here. I can't ever remember. But yeah, we went ahead and pulled out the annuals in here and it's looking a lot cleaner. And I did notice this little volunteer piglet fountain grass. I was gonna pull that out and I thought, I'm gonna keep that. We'll dig that up this spring and plant it somewhere else. So. That's kind of fun. Sometimes your fountain grass do that. And if you don't like it, pull it out, throw it out. If you want to keep it, pull it out, plant it somewhere. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. It is just such a blessing to be out here and breathe this nice, fresh, clean air. Even though it is a little foggy, I can hear the birds chirping. Can you hear them? We'll have a moment of silence for the bird chirp. There's a hawk.
Anyway, maybe you can't hear that. <laughs> but I sure can. And I'm just enjoying every little moment that I can get out here, especially in the winter. Even with the snow, there's still like a little patch of snow that is still here and it's kind of pretty. Like look at all that bright white color that it's providing right now in my garden. I don't have that color in my garden, so it's kind of nice. It kind of ties in the lamb's ear. <laughs> the white snow ties in my white lamb's ear over there. But anyway, just trying to think positive and uh, thank you guys so much for coming out here in my garden with me and just uh, cleaning up some of the things that I didn't get to in the fall. And you know what? If I didn't get to them this winter either, I'd get to them in the spring. No big deal. Do what you can when you can. That's all we can do. So anyway, appreciate you guys. I just hope that you're having a really great day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, boy. Watching the birds. 